division, three round, five minutes each. Four and oh versus one and two. Daniel Wyatt probably looking to start fast. Sportsmanship always a plus. Long. Both men throwing inside leg kicks, their lead leg kicks, checking out the distance. Calf kick from Wyatt. Calf yeah, one kick from Tolver. One thing about Danny Wyatt, he definitely, he definitely brings it. I used to train at American Top Team when I lived in South Florida, and we fought, you know, on a card before together. So he's definitely an exciting fighter and one of those up and coming prospects at 4-0 here coming out of the state of Florida. He's a huge 145-er. Another calf kick landed on the ground. Wyatt's uh, pressing the action on Tovar. Tovar's doing a good job maintaining distance, using his, uh, creating some barriers there. He's got a nice underhook. He's not allowing uh, Wyatt to enclose the hips. Wyatt's trying to step over. He's got a hold of that out. There we go. That pressure into the fence, but Tovar's doing a fantastic job creating those frames and, and preventing Wyatt from closing the gap. Are we going to see a fourth choke finish? Vegas would like you to bet differently. <laughs> While it doesn't look like a whole lot's going on right now, Tovar's got to hold on to all of Wyatt's body weight, compressing his ability to, to breathe. And even if he doesn't get the submission here, just the holding is just annoying to have that around the neck of Michael Tovar. And he could, Daniel Wyatt can also do just hold this position right here and just knee his head. All his, point, his hand is on the ground, so it's fair game to knee to the head here. Absolutely. Yeah, he's stepping in for the guillotine, finishing with a knee. Probably. And knee on that separation. Tova looks energized by that separation, though. Another calf kick. It's crazy when Tova throws those calf kicks, it looks like he's hitting a tree. And uh, not having the effect you would imagine on Wyatt. DY is a FSU alum. They probably could have used him on the football team. <laughs> he was definitely at FSU one of those, you know, pretty party boys. If, if I looked like that, I'd walk around shirtless for no reason. Both guys showing crazy composure. Just trying to figure out and fig find their spots and pick. Both guys being very cold calculated. Oh. Wyatt's stalking him down. Mixing guy. it up. Yeah, Wyatt's doing a great job of strikes, knees, and then going in for the takedown. He's just not there trying to look for a knockout. He's not there like some of the amateur fighters who just all they want to take down. He's doing a good job of weaving it all together. Hence why it's mixed martial arts, MMA. You got to be well-versed, especially in 2023, the way has mixed martial arts has evolved. You got to be well-rounded. You can't just go to the gym like, oh, man, I'm just going to take the boxing classes. Or, oh, man, you know, I'm just going to take jujitsu classes. You got to do everything that your gym offers. Back when I was coaching, I would always urge my guys, I would say, listen, whatever you hate doing, do that the most because that's that's your weakness. Most guys love going in practice striking because it looks cool. And the, those guys that hate grappling because they can't stand, they can't lose on the ego on the mat. I was like, do the number one thing you hate the most, you have to do it the most. Yeah, the only just, way you're going to address that weakness. Yeah, and don't just show up on sparring days. If your coaches are any good, if your gym is any good, and they, they won't just let you show up on sparring days. But I know some guys, they just show up just to spar, just to bang. Where are you, you know, the rest of the, rest of the week? Your normal weekend warrior, no problem doing that. But if you're going to take this to a professional level, it, it is key to get in there and, and fine tune all those techniques. And what I always like to call pressure test. Tobel's giving a fit on the bottom. He's not just taking this. He's creating opportunities to strike. He's using a great job of head separation. 
this isn't a great position for anybody to be in. You can tell why it's just looking to, for an opportunity to grind. Yeah, he's doing a great job of utilizing that head pressure on the cheek, on the chin. I like to see Tobel put his feet in Wyatt's hips and push away. Professional level, most most fighters, most successful fighters are going to be are going to be in shape. Cardio shouldn't be an issue. It's three five minute rounds at your gym. Hopefully, you're training more than you know three rounds when you're sparring, even just when you're you know rolling live. That when we come into the fight, it's no problem. Getting busy with the strikes, the calf kick. It's both guys trading them. Nice knee right up the middle. And Daniel White doing the, pretty much the same thing he did in the first round, just early on, early on here a little bit sooner. Strike, strike, strikes, and then going for the takedown. If I'm Tobel's coach, I'm, I'm not letting him stalk me down to the fence again. Because if you watch Wyatt's setting everything up with strikes until Tobel backs up to about a foot off the fence, and then he, start, and then he shoots. Exactly. we got to work on circling. The benefit is Tobel's weathering the storm from a bad position. Uh, Wyatt hasn't been able to really affect any offense from here other than just kind of sit. And it doesn't seem like Daniel White is looking to, to open up a pass to go. He's looking to just sit there and then waiting for the perfect opportunity to rain down strikes via elbows or punches. Tobel's making his own opportunities here. This is always a hard part to stand up from. Uh, if you got the flexibility, I'm putting my feet in the hip socket there and I'm pushing off. I'm either going to be able to wall walk or I'm going to be able to create some distance and some separation. Threatening back with a guillotine again. They had to look in the transition there to the back, but the cage got in the way that time. If this was in the center open mat, he would have had his back no problem. Got a knee shield set up in there, looking to probably get out on the on his right side, but Wyatt's got that uh, overhook on that side, preventing his hips from moving. Larry uh, Folsom's telling him they got to make something happen, or he's going to stand him up. Want to see some action? Wyatt's not really advancing the position. Strikes that he is landing are. Marginal at best. Now it looks like we're trying to do something. Well, he did try to pass a moment ago and almost lost his position, had to resecure it. Yeah, and if Daniel White just continues to hold him here and then land punches, eventually the referee will stop it. Oh, well, sometimes it's not necessarily the damage that it's doing, but just the volume. A la Frank Mir uh, Lesnar two, or uh, Frank Mir or Lesnar versus uh, Carwin, that second fight where he just repeatedly punched. Yeah, if you just punch, 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 the referee's gonna you know go in there. It's their job to protect the fighter. So if I see you taking a whole bunch of unanswered punches, I'm gonna stop it. Tobel's got Wyatt locked down where he can't. There we go. Larry's gonna stand him up, recognizing that Tobel had him locked down to where he wasn't gonna be able to really amount any offense. A little sportsmanship never go hurts anybody oh, at night. And he landed on the chin. Yeah, and I don't every time. And even though this has been working thus far for Daniel White, two or three strikes going for the takedown. I think Daniel could finish Michael Tovar standing up. He leads in great, great with that lead, with that power knee, and just continues to strike. You gotta wonder if his corner is telling him to, to do this lay and pray method. Because he's not really able to, to advance the position. Wearing him down. Yeah, right now he's definitely you know playing this playing this smart. He won the first round handily. He's up on the scorecard so far for the second round. Absolutely. So sometimes you just want to get in there, get the dub, and live to fight another day. Yeah, at this point in time, you know why it's protecting that O, being four and O, looking to go five and O against a one and two guy. Uh, I'd love to see uh, Tobel get the opportunity to like get something going. Great use of the head from Wyatt, using that thing as a, a pry bar, making space to get in there to try to mount some offense. Tobel's doing a great job with wrist control and kind of he's staying out of harm's way. 
Normally you see a guy in this position, he's getting busted up pretty good. None of those are super effective. Yeah, well, there's a bit of a blueprint to uh, building a successful pro career, and it involves stacking up a few wins. And if you do it on this platform, your eyes start landing on you and, and they, start getting shots at the next level. Yeah, exactly. And they definitely want, at the next level, they definitely want to see finishes. Yes. If Daniel White continues to keep it standing with those knees and those long-range shots, I believe he can get the job done. He's dominating the round nonetheless, but... You're, you think you'd like to see him yeah, hunt for a finish a little bit more? Especially when you – sometimes you got to risk it just, just a little bit, especially when you see there's clearly a, a, a disparity, you know, in, in talent level here. When you go up against these guys that you're superior in and superior dominance, you need finishes. It's not enough to win the, you know, unanimous decision 30-27. All right, but how is it – what's going to separate you from the other, you know, featherweights, the other 145ers that won tonight? Right. Because as great as Daniel is, he's not the only – 4-0 guy in the state of Florida. Right. Out of his back pocket, a uh, flying knee there, it's open. I feel if he could come hard and swarm very quickly, he could overwhelm uh, Tavar and uh, walk away with the finish, but. Especially now after the first two rounds, Michael Tovar is going to be expecting that takedown. So yep. if I'm Danny White, I'm going to level I'm change, faint, 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 and then, and then come right the there, right there. Make him bite on it so bad where his hands are down low trying to attempt to, to stop your takedown. And there it is, wide open. Overhand, a knee, a head kick. Wyatt initiates the exchanges and then does not just chase him down. Takes a couple of punches. If he backs up, he just stops. Regathers at the center. Tovar's got it. He needs yeah, come back to the center. Tovar was doing a good job switching, circling. Oh, and the nose is split of uh, Michael Tovar with that last knee. Wyatt's got an interesting tell with that jab, shaking it like it's a maraca before he throws it. He does it three times and then he throws it every single time. One, nope, that was a one. Yeah, and right there, Daniel, it seems like he's listening to what his coach has said. A couple of times in the previous first two rounds where he landed three strikes, he rushed in for the takedown. Now he's landing strikes and backing off, landing strikes and backing off, picking them apart, looking for that real deal one knockout shot. Now with your experience, you know, watching young guys come up, you want to see them kind of, this guy's definitely on the, on the door uh, of taking that next step at 4-0. He probably wants to put together a more complete fight rather than, you know, just laying on somebody and ragdolling him. Do you think that plays a, a role in his third round, coming out just striking as, as effectively as he is? Yeah, I think the first two rounds, you know, definitely told a story. Daniel White is a superior grappler on the ground. So now he has those two, you know, those two rounds in his pocket. So he's going to win no matter what, barring any crazy, you know, submission or knockout. But going into this third round, now he's displaying his superior striking. And I believe this is where he's able to finish the fight on the feet. Continuing Pepper up in that jab as he drops down his hand, that head kick and that knee right up the middle is there. And he's busting Tovar up right now. He's piecing him up solid. Uh, that was a nice left. See, but a couple jabs from Tovar and then Where Daniel White takes it right back down to the ground with two minutes and 30 through, seconds yeah. left. He just got that take down there, almost that will. He almost got uh, Tovar lulled into confidence that he was just going to keep that third round standing. You don't see enough of the, the palm heel strike in the ground and pound for some reason. Yeah, although the palm the palm strike may not do much damage, but if you if somebody smacks you with a palm to your ear, that's going to throw off your equilibrium. That's going to mess up your hearing. Now you can't hear what your coaches are saying. I've never thought of it in that way. That That's a brilliant point. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, the little things. There's, I think that was D.Y.'s first attempt to pass. Yeah. Well, since the second round. It, if I'm <coughs> if I'm Wyatt's team, I'm telling him, sit down on that leg, hold the half guard. You don't see enough guys hold stapling that half guard. It's a great place to, to put some ground and pound. 
It almost looks like he's trying to clear and set up that arm triangle. Yeah, and 90 seconds left. He has plenty of time here to work to finish the job, either a submission or just posture up and rain down some elbows. So Wyatt's got to get his hips on the other side of Tovar. Big mouse under the eye of Michael Tovar. Under a minute to go. A yeah, minute to go here. If there's not any more activity, Larry Folsom might just stand this up. Well, you got to wonder if, well, I don't think there's a ton of blood going to Tovar's eye, but this is a bad position. Tovar gives up the back. Yeah, Larry Folsom is looking in closely. We got 24 seconds left. I don't see why it's over there getting instructions from his corner. I, don't see I say this last 10 fight. seconds, last 10 seconds, Daniel just needs to rain down punches. Make it exciting. And raining down strikes for the last 10 seconds. And this one's going to go to the judges' scorecard. And that was a dominant performance by Daniel D.Y. Wyatt. All right, ladies and gentlemen. The judges have reached a unanimous decision. Your winner out of the red corner, Daniel, the pretty boy Wyatt.